This is it, people. This is what you've been waiting for. This is Everyday Celebrity Podcast. The podcast for everyday people with everyday problems trying to find everyday solutions to accomplish everyday goals. Let's start the show. You, 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 you. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Celebrity Podcast, No One Podcast in Oakland, No One Podcast in the Bay Area. And today is a special day. We have a special guest, like we always do. I mean, some of you guys might see this brother on social media. You guys seen this nigga in the strip clubs, if you go to the after parties in Oakland. <laughs> you guys probably also see him, you know what I'm saying, mingling with the stars out there. And he is an Oakland legend, and we're going to hear, we're going to sit here and talk about his life, his upbringing, and then, you know, what I'm saying everything else in between. Welcome, Unks, Unkster, the Hunkster, to the show. <laughs> Thank you, very much. Thank you for having. Me. How was your night? Uh, last night. Oh, my nights nice were pretty good, man. Um, I ain't been doing much. I kind of uh, made sure that I was going to be available for you. So I didn't check any other day. So oh yeah, I I'll probably go out after this. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. So are you uh you're originally from Oakland? Yes, born and raised. Okay. What part of Oakland? North Oakland, so I would say any you know, North Oakland is anything maybe past fortieth. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And a lot of people know you right from like Fab, you being his uncle. Like all the the shit that you you two are working on the business the businesses that you guys got going on dope air and everything, but we I want to talk to you about like your life like people always you know what I'm saying connect when they see you they connect you with Fab right uh it matters if you know me from that platform because mm-hmm. if you somebody that kind of knows me more so from social media then mm-hmm. that's kind of you would uh. But do you think, I mean, do you think the majority of the people that who know you is from social yeah, media, right? Social media. Okay. That's so they don't, they don't know your, your independent, like, solo story. Uh, well, I'm always transparent with my story, so I'm sure mm. that, you know what I'm saying, um, a lot of people that pay attention to my page uh, know me more so for, like, things I've been through in life, the things that I'm trying to do in conversation in life. If you uh, know me from Fab Page, you know me. Dope era, you know me from, you know, skid, you may know me from community activist work, you know, a different, a different, a whole lot of different areas. So, you know what I'm saying? But our page is kind of like a fine, it's no separate, but it's just on his page where you would. Mm. Are you actually, because you know how niggas say, oh, that's my cousin, oh, that's my. No, I'm, I'm actually a hood uncle. Okay. A hood uncle, so you're not blood related. No. So where did you and Fab meet? Uh, he used to be real close friends with one of my nephews. And in like 2014, I had just graduated a drug program. And uh, I used to be going down to this barbershop on 45th and Market all the time. Like when I get off work, I go there because I really didn't have no, uh, no really other positive outlets at that time to really, you know what I'm saying, go hang somewhere. So I used to go over there and then I... Um, you know, so we had we was familiar with each other, but um, I just started hanging around and I started doing stuff for the kids. Like I start selling t-shirts to try to fund take kids on field trips. So you know, we just started coming together with a lot of the community stuff that we both was trying to do. You know, and I started supporting the most stuff that he did, mm. whatever I had going on at that point. I was support, and then we just end up from that relationship just be together every day. Like it was. Years and years, you probably you see when you see both. What uh year? What uh, around what year was this when you like first met him? When you first met him? No, no, I probably seen him before as kids, but like when we got real, real close. Mm. Two thousand. So you guys are like the same age? No, I I'm I, I'm like twelve years. Twelve years older than 10 him. Ten years, at least ten years older. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so as you were growing up in North Oakland, right? 
what was it what was it like for you as a child? I mean, I mean, you know, uh I think everybody had the same if you grew up in urban communities, everybody kind of had the same story. Mm. Uh my I just I happened to come up when um at a time where like, was this what did you did you come up during like the I mean the heavy crack era? Well, I was an adult at that. I mean, I was an, I was like when that hit, I was probably like fourteen, fifteen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that those are the, that's the era I came up. In. The original, what you would call the dope era, is my generation era. Mm -hmm. But you know, you are saying like coming up when I came up, you know, uh, Black Panthers was around. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this was like before crack hit. You know what I mean? Um, but both of my parents had always used drugs. Period. So it was. Oh, were you? Were you? Uh, do you have siblings? I'm only child. Only I, have, I have brothers from my father, but I'm a mother. Mm, so you you grew up in your in a household with just you and your mother. Uh, my father would be your father was there, in and out. He'd be in and out of jail, so he'd be in and out. Of my, uh, go to jail, I, but I'm more so kind of like raised myself after I got like 12 years old. I mm. Was your father in and out of jail over uh, like drug related crimes? Oh yeah, yeah. My father was a heroin addict. A heroin addict. Okay, okay, okay. Were you close to him? Uh, we we was close. As you know, when I was coming up, yeah, we was we was all right. You know, he'd just be in and out. So, mm. I, you know, what I'm saying I just start taking care of myself at a young age. You know, kind of like fending for myself. So I wouldn't say I, we never really had a bad relationship. We probably just didn't have a strong, powerful father son relationship. Mm. You know, those type of things happen when you come. Um, when you when you have parents that use drugs, I later use drugs though. So. I was one at one time that same father, my father. Yeah, you know. Yeah, when my when my dad, my well, my dad. I tell this story all the time. My dad was an alcoholic when I when I was a kid, and I despised him, right? Um, and I didn't want to be anything like him, right? right? So growing up, I never smoked weed, never drunk alcohol, but then as I got older, I started to drink alcohol, right? Um, and then when kids are young. And they always say to themselves, oh, I don't want to be like my parents, right? And then as you get older, you find yourself doing shit that your parents were doing. So I, I think that if if you have parents, I, so I think that saying it goes with you have parents. Uh, mm. Because there's a lot of kids that want to grow up to be like their parents. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And follow in the foot, same footsteps of their father if, it's, if they got the right father. And I also understand that what you hate, you become. Yeah, exactly. Because that's where your energy is going. Yeah. You know I mean, and, and at a young age, you know, you despise something to only realize that, hey, you look up and like, damn, I'm pretty starting to be that, which I didn't yeah. know. And, and, and it doesn't even have to be a negative thing. You could be like, oh, my my dad used to fucking uh, yell at me because uh, of the lawn or some shit. And then you grow up and you get a, you buy a house yeah. and, and then you have a kid and then you end up yelling at your son because the lawn is fucked up. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a it's negative. Just, it's just, you know, what you pick up. What you, mm -hmm. you know, um, but on 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 a on dynamic of what you're saying, like, um, like you hate, yeah, I don't want to be like that. Like, I, I just think that a lot of the times as kids, we don't understand what a, what a grown up is going, what they're facing, you know, what may drive them to they do. Mm -hmm. So we adjust them for who, we adjust them, hey, my father is not, maybe not like someone else's father. Yep. You know what I mean? And um and from that we are slowly become that which we claim not to um like because we grow up and we have our own faces, we face our own challenges. And then, you know, we get to a certain point we look back and you're like, damn, I, I didn't I really didn't understand because I I wanted my father to be somebody that I wanted him to be to the love of who he was. Did you find yourself as a child uh Telling yourself, asking yourself, well, why the fuck is my, if he really cared, why the fuck is he doing this shit that's going to take him away from me? I don't know if I ever, um, you know, if, if you get to the point where you're like, man, you miss your dad or something, you'd be like, but I don't think that I was, everybody in my community and in my neighborhood, we all damn near had the same, uh, the same shit going on in our households. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't every household only, it was, uh, Less households doing it was more households doing bad than it was 
to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me? So, yeah. so that was a norm. It was a norm for me. You mm. know what I'm saying? Me, uh, you know, your uncles went to jail. Your partner's uncles went to jail. Your mm. partner's fathers went to jail. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, it's sad to say. Um, man, everybody, not, everybody may not see it this way. But in our community, it's like, it's like you go to jail. Like, yeah. It's like it's it's a respectable thing. It's like yeah, like it's like yeah, okay. Which is jail. which is ignorant which is, and stupid is, as fuck. Yeah, I'm saying, but you know, it just it's just I just, that's what I'm pointing out is that it's really not nothing to be uh, proud of. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it it becomes what you expect when you growing up and you following a certain role models that. That went to jail, that come out and say, I stay solid or I did this and that. You know, you if you engulfed in that same lifestyle, you get out of jail and somebody will celebrate you. Mm. You graduate college, nobody pick. Yeah. Uh, some niggas some niggas would be thinking you 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 selling out because you're going to college. Yeah, you know, so it's just it's just you know, it's so it's it's just it's just sad to say when you come up in certain conditions. Mm. How backwards your thinking be till you get old enough to be like, hey, I've been thinking fucked up, and it, and you know, and it's hard to, um, I don't care what anyone says, it's hard to, to uh, remove certain ways you look at life as you once you get older because it'd be programmed to think that way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And then when you get, but when you're trying to get to the point where you're trying to make a change in your life, then you understand that I had to change the way I see certain things. So you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> You'll look at going to jail, you'll be like, I really don't want to say, you know, like somebody personally, you go to jail, you'll be like, man, it's a better way. Mm. But you got to let everybody go through their own journey. You can, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we try to force people to get it once we got it. Mm. Man, I got it. I got to figure it out. Now come figure, like, nah, you got to let them continue to go through what they going through because then they're going to have their epiphany. You know what I'm saying? They're going to realize that, hey, and then you, that's when you be in position to more so guide guide someone through the transition because changing your life is a very 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 hard task yeah especially when you've lived a certain way and you get to your 30s and your 40s and yeah, you yeah. want to do something can't different. teach an old dog new tricks that's a true saying you understand me so it's like it, it's hard it's extremely hard to change that thinking and especially the habits that come with that thing you know what I mean so you really have to the only thing you can really do is remove yourself from certain um, environment so that with time, your thinking becomes a little bit different. But yeah. you're still going to hold on to that. I To those that, you know, all that, man, don't tell or this and that. Like, those things are never going to change. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody working, you know, like, we give people, we get square as fast as they tell. Mm-hmm. Even if you get out the street life at a certain age, you're still going to be like, hey, nigga, tell them ain't cool. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Because you come from that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, and it's this hard for you to look at somebody that, hey, I told because it was, it was, I better, better handle that. Well, I mean, well, telling, I think there's two sides of telling. There's like, I have no problem with like, if you are an innocent motherfucker and then the only way to uh, like punish someone who did wrong to you is to tell because we, I mean, we all know that we can't do street justice, right? Uh, like, let's say, let's say your of uh, your fucking um, your niece is like molested or by the teacher or something. You can't go to the teacher and, and whoop this nigga ass to where he's uh on the bri- on the bridge of death, which you should. That's street justice. So, so, so you can't do that. You gotta fucking go to the cops and be like, yo, this nigga is having an inappropriate relationship with this minor. Take this nigga to jail. I be- I believe that's good te- that's good snitching. It, that's not really so and, th- and I would look at that like that's that's like like I said, that's not the nothing to do with the street law. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So so yeah, a person should have that right to to have to go tell. Like that's not telling. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to I'm dealing with it in a in a legal way of how you're supposed to. It's not gonna always happen like that because you know um, you might not be able to control your your anger. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or you know what I'm saying? Um, 
or you just might be angry enough to want to feel like, you know, sometimes we do stuff right because we want to feel better about it. And we go and we say, oh, I'm going to fuck him up behind that. Mm-hmm. We're only doing it because we want to feel better about it. It's not, we're not doing it because it's the right thing to do. So in situations where you get to the point where understanding what's the right thing to do and sometime doing what you feel is right, ain't right, you'll be able to make better decisions. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so you you won't, you won't implement yourself in certain situations where you automatically get in trouble because what's going to end up happening is you're going to get blown out of the boat. You're going to be looked at as more the villain than the person that did the harm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the punishment, you know what I mean? So, like you say, street justice is not always the right justice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But um, but you have to also mature and grow to a point in life where you see it that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, your early stages of getting out of the streets, you ain't going to, you're going to want to go act on it. Yeah. See, because that's your normal. You know what I mean? But then you get back to a point where you be like, I ain't going to be able to be here for my I ain't going to be able to be here for my kids. I ain't mm. going to be able to be here for all the people that I want to be here for because mm. I'm going to go take them and because I want to feel better about handling them instead of allowing the system to have this place. Is there any time that you feel where street justice is justified? Because everyone knows that the system is not meant for everybody. The system is fucked up. So sometimes you need street justice. Is there any situation, do you think, street justice is justified? I can I don't If it's about, you know, we on camera and I really don't want to talk to being, well, others may think I'm a bad person. Mm. But you know, like it's like I'm not gonna say it's right, but it's just like that's like somebody slapped the mom. Yeah, wait for the police to come. Yeah, that's free just. So yeah, it's a whole lot of situations where I feel like handling it the way it should be handled because that's the position they put themselves in to be taken care of. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not scared to say if 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 someone was to rape or murder my mother, I'll probably kill them. You understand if someone saying? was to rape or murder my sister, I'll probably kill them. At least that's what we're or at if least I had, or if I had a daughter, if someone was yeah. to do that, I will kill them. That would be that would be your motive. I mean that would be your driving force that I'm gonna harm someone. Yeah. I mean that's my yeah. driving force and somebody that's hundred percent like, <laughs> what hey, would happen. Somebody else would be like, hey man, let your system handle it. Yeah, it's fuck the system. the system. You're dying. Like it's I'm it's killing you. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like but that's not what I but I would not consider that street justice. Mm. Well, street justice is that's that's it. Street justice. That's like some street justice. Street you're you're justice. Be, you're being a you're being a judge, the jury, and the fucking. Uh, so can, uh, I, can I say this right? Yeah, go ahead. Say if all parties involved doesn't have no street connection, they're not in street. street. So you define street justice as what niggas who are like uh, gangsters and shit you, like that. So somebody that's active in the street. So what street is active? Justice it? would be like somebody. Somebody tell them. Mm-hmm. And instead of, and, and you know, that's street just like, you know, I'm going to handle it in the street. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you, you don't got to be from the streets to handle something in the street way if something happens. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, killing mm-hmm. somebody ain't, I, I ain't automatically got to do it. With the street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, because you could be a hood nigga, but not hood. Because that's, basic. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you can be, from the hood, but not of the hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but it, you got squares that, that that'll go do the same thing. And then you say, well, he handled the street. That's where he handled it in the street. Yeah. Yeah. But not, that doesn't mean that it was from the street. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that more so street justice would be like, I'm going to handle this shit in the streets where it belongs. That's where it kicked off at. That's where you take care of it at. Yeah. Well, I define, I define street justice as uh, uh, someone who who takes action without going the to legal the without going the legal route you know yeah. what i'm saying like someone did wrong to me i'm going to handle it the way i feel the way i feel it should be handled 
go for that. That's I mean, that's my I, I that's my it. definition of street justice. Yeah, I would look at it somewhere in that way too, because mm. you're gonna do some street shit to get it taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you when you were growing up, right, uh during your days, um, you were talking about your father. I interviewed um I had a past guest, uh Stunning Man. I don't know, you, you probably know this nigga. But he told me um he made a comment about his father not being in his household when he was growing up. And I asked him if your father was in your household while you was growing up, do you think you'll be a different man than what you are today? And that, that you stated that your dad was in and out of your household, your life, right? If your father, if you, if you were growing up, if your father was in the household, right? Do you think your life would have been different? So when you ask that question, right, you have to ask that question from understanding. Um, so say my father never would have went to jail. Yeah. He would have stayed in my house and mm-hmm. always been a drug addict. Mm-hmm. It, I can't say that would have made him a, my, that would have been a better situation. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, like I mean, said, every, every everyone's everyone's so, dad is so, different and exactly. shit, right? So that's you know what I'm saying. saying. So in in that question, I probably would have learned a, a few more things, but I can't say that my situation would have been any different because drugs was the main negative thing inside of the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's like that's like saying uh, for a person that hasn't met that. Yeah. And their father was an alcoholic. This is bad, right? And they grew up. They, uh, do you think life has been better? Father. Father. Mm-hmm. You know? Because mm-hmm. I would have had to deal with all the shit that he was going through. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the only way I feel like a situation could be better if a father was in the household is if the father was adding something positive and good to the house. So you... uh. I mean, you stated multiple on multiple platforms that you had a drug problem, correct? Yeah. Do you think if your dad was in your household, and even if he was a drug addict, you're witnessing this and seeing his behavior, do you think that would have uh, deterred you from doing drugs? Because you're seeing how the effect so, of drugs so, firsthand. So, so Just like my father, my father with alcohol. My father was in the household enough for me to know what was going on. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, and my father tried certain tactics to steer me away from using drugs. You know, but I just think when you get to a certain age, the reason you drug you use a drug, the reason you choose to use drugs is your reason. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter if somebody was um some people will go that route and be like, This shit was going on in my house, I ain't doing it. You understand know I me? Mean? And they will try everything and do everything possible to not go down that route. And sometimes that works for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you have some that, you have some people that nobody in the house use drugs and they still use drugs. Yeah. And then you have people in your life that just, they come up from in a household where drugs are being used and then eventually they just end up using drugs. I just feel like, I don't know, um, my choices. And my reasons for using drugs when I started using drugs was mine. They didn't have nothing to do. They was they wasn't um they had nothing to do with what I seen or what I knew from my parents. They had everything to do with a situation that was present for me and I was like, all right, fuck it. Get out. That's the direction. When did you start what age did you start experiencing? Like 20, 21. 20. And what drugs are you speaking of? Heroin. Heroin? Yeah. So, um, so wait, so that was the first like drug, drug you started using? I, I, mean, I was an athlete, so I never smoked weed. I never used to drink. I never, I mean, I used to drink, but I would, like, we would drink just, I, as my partner's drunk, 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 and when I, I, I wouldn't drink like, like, we would mm. drink occasionally, but I wasn't, I, I was an athlete, so it was just a road that I didn't, that I, all my partners, like, when crack first hit, a lot of my little, a lot of, like, a lot of people maybe a year or two older than me, or my age, start smoking like Grimmies. They start, Putting coke in they in they cigarettes mm. and all kind of shit. I just wouldn't. I just wasn't me. I was, and then you know I went end up going to juvenile YA, which would be um, juvenile prison. And uh-huh. when I got out, my friends was they was like they had when we had went when I left. We was all getting money. When I got back, someone was getting high, 
And um, we were just sitting in the house one night, and it was like, man, it was just explaining how long you can have sex with somebody off this shit. And I was just like, <laughs> man, I'm like and but I used to be capping on like, man, you niggas are dope things now. Like I used, and then at, and just one night I was I had met somebody new. I was like, oh, go get me one of them stacks. Changed my whole life at that. So heroin is that's a that's a big drug to like go from zero to a hundred, right? Because most people will smoke weed. And then weed will go to like some other shit, like an ecstasy pill. The next thing you're doing some coke, but to skip all the little, not to say, not to say, wait, not to say that those drugs are small, right? But to skip all of those little things between, because every every time you ask someone, every every time that I've spoke to people who, who do drugs, right? I ask them, oh, what do you, what do you do? Oh, I I do actually I do I do coke I smoke smoke I don't well, I don't really cons- consider weed a drug, but all that other shit, even fentanyl. Oh, I I sniff some fentanyl he- here and there, but then I say, oh, do you do heroin? And then literally, hundred percent of the people that I talk to, they'd be like, hell no, I don't do that because that's a drug that's like on some serious shit. So for for me to hear that you s- went from being sober to heroin. Because That's I really, crazy. Because I really, at that time, I probably really wasn't trying to drug for the high that it would give. Mm-hmm. I was more so using the drug for the ability that it would give. Mm-hmm. You feel know I me? Mean? So, like, heroin is like, it's an opiate. So, most opiates make you pro, like, you you probably won't bust all night. You understand what I'm saying? And that's needles, right? No, you can snort it, you can smoke it, you can do whatever. Right, so, yeah. you know so, what, what were you doing? I've done it. I've snorted it. I shot it. I've mm. I've never smoked it. The first time you ever done heroin, how did you do it? Snort. Snort it? Yeah. When you say snort, it's like a powder? Yeah, you just, okay. it, it could be, like, it comes like in a tar like form. You just take some baking powder or something, take it, rub, mm-hmm. it out, rub it out, rub it out, and it comes to a powder. So this is on a random night where the nigga told you like, oh, you can fuck a bitch for hours. And, okay. And, but I had no, I mean, it, it had already be like word of mouth, but it was just once specific night we was in the house I was like fuck go get me. did you have a bitch lined up that's yeah. the question okay I just told you. I just you ain't doing that shit just, <laughs> ain't just doing that shit just to do yeah. it so you know what I'm saying and then you, that becomes what happens is you become was it true though it was did you fuck the bitch all night most definitely true okay and then so now you a go to every time you want to have sex you want that feeling uh, you understand me and then so now you might do it for a, you might have started off doing it for the call mm the effect that it would have based on you doing it and then eventually you're going using it for the high of, as, as well as that. You know what I'm saying? Because now you've got, you didn't got the like and the high. I didn't really give a fuck about being What high. What point were you, do you were, I mean, were you addicted to it? Yeah. Were you addicted at the first, the first time? So, so when you first start using like, it would take maybe a week or two consistent using mm. and then you wake up and you need drugs. You wake up like you got the food, big runs going on. Mm-hmm. So you know, as soon as you go get some drugs, your food. When you were at this point of your life, right? What were you? What were you? What were you doing? Were you like working, school? What was going on? I was. I was outside. outside. So, mm-hmm. so, I probably get a real job. Mm-hmm. Really, like, had a job, job. You understand me? Where I work, work, had my first real, real job was when I graduated from Salvation Army right here on here on Seventh Street. Uh, I graduated the program. I started working as a resident manager, like somebody that like helped run the program. Then, definitely, I ended up warehouse part. That's all the donations. Mm-hmm. So those was like the first two jobs I ever had. I was always in the street. I was, you know, um, always would just get out of jail and run back to the behavior. Why did you, I mean, what you, you said you were in and out of jail. Jail didn't teach you. Did it, it did, So basically, what I'm asking, it, it didn't have a big enough impact for you to be like, yo, fuck. I don't want to come back in this motherfucker anymore, so I'm going to change my life. 
I think I think um, for most people, jail is not going to. What goes on in jail, like that, you have to want to. It has to be something about jail that makes you want to stop coming. As far as for you. Like, I don't think somebody can go to jail and see somebody get stabbed and be like, man, I'm never coming back to jail. Because, yo, you can say that in jail. Mm. But when you get out of jail and you got to face these these head-on um, things, if you relate back to what you know, what your norm is, you're going to put yourself in a position to go back to jail. You have Most people that go to jail that stop going to jail, it's people that go to jail and change their life while they're in jail. Yeah. You understand me? The niggas become Muslims and shit. Yeah, or you might you just you just change life. You just like man, I give up. I'm tapped out. This ain't what I want no more. Mm-hmm. So now it's not jail. Is not really. You just want something better for yourself. Mm-hmm. For me, jail had become a norm. So I can go to jail, and I would go to jail so often that everybody in jail knew me. So I could become a power worker. I could become like I just could like like as dumb as it sounds. I probably could go to jail and be more of somebody there than I could be if I got out because when I yeah. got out, I had to deal with the pressures of life. Yeah. In jail, everybody knew me. Yeah, that's normal. A lot of niggas go to jail and they're a big deal in jail and they come out, they're just a regular nigga. You know, the world is small. Easy to be somebody in a small world. Most people are, com- a lot of people are more comfortable. When well, I want to say a lot of people, a certain p- few are comfortable, more comfortable in jail but, but, but than in the outside me, world. But you want me to explain why? Mm. Because the majority of the pressures of life that you have when you're free, you don't have to face jail. Yeah. You know, and, and like I say, changing your life from someone you've been for a long period of time. And now a word from our sponsor. If you think you might be feeling depressed, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, today's sponsor, BetterHelp, is here for you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. Talk to your therapist in a private, online environment at your convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000-plus therapist network, that gives you access to help that you may not be available in your area. You just fill out the questionnaire to help access your specific needs, and then you can get matched with the therapist in as little as 48 hours. Then you schedule a video or phone session, plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 3 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp.com slash Everyday Celebrity. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash everyday celebrity it's waiting for you um so don't so that is going to be hard to uh Um, so back to what I was saying. So like the pressures, like, like you can go to jail, you don't got to deal with that. So in jail, like a lot of the, when I was going to jail, when I first started going to jail, it would be a saying on the street and this would be a dolphin on the street is a shot caller in jail. Is a what? Is a shot caller in jail. Shot caller. Okay. So that mean like. Yeah, you might disrespect him and run over him out here when he's doing bad. Mm. But when you get caught up and go to jail, you go into his world now. Mm. So it would be like, man, you better watch how you treat somebody out here because nigga, when you go in there, you're going to have to deal with him. Yep. You feel me? That's where all they folks at now. The niggas that they hung out with, the people that they running in and out of jail with, 
the people that they do bad with. Now they buff, swole, big, running and running. And then you come in there, you think because I had some money, I'm somebody on the street. They don't that money shit mean nothing here. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But a lot of cats just knew better than to be like, man, don't disrespect these knocks on the street because when you go in jail, you're going to have to face them. Mm. But were you ever, I mean, were you ever locked up in prison? Yeah. Okay. Majority of I don't know. How, how long would you say out of you've been behind bars at, in total? Like off and on? Yeah, but just add them all up. I add it all up. Anywhere. 10 or 12 years? Mm. All drug related? Uh, you, I mean, you don't even got to answer I mean, that. It would, I would say this. <laughs> Not all drug related crime, mm. but drug related crime. When was the last time? What year? The last time I went to jail? Yes. 2012. 2012. And you haven't went back since? Okay. So people see you now, right? People see you now. They see your Instagram. They see you next to T.I. Noriega. They see you next to fuck. Uh, you have a uh, in the front of Dope Era store clothing. Um, they see you traveling this the nation, right? So you're basically like a success story. Um, now, in the prior conversation, we talked about you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and which that is true. And when I say when old people change, right? Something drastic. Someone can't. If someone from the outside or from whatever can't come up to a to a person and be like, oh, you need to stop doing drugs. You need to stop drinking. They have they have to want to do it themselves. But in order for them to have that light bulb go off in their head, I believe something drastic has to happen in their life to be like, yo, you know what? Oh, I just had a heart attack. I'm going to stop eating fast food. So for me, right, I had a daughter and uh, as she started to get older, she was able to like see a lot of the things that I was doing. You know mm. what I mean? And uh, and I mean older. I'm like mm. seventeen now. So at four, like three, four, or five years old, she would start finding little shit that I use use drugs with or shit like that. She'd give it to me instead of give it. He knew what it was. And um and I just wanted it to be a I was I think I was just I was tired, but I was more so wanting to be a better example of what a father was to my daughter. Like my sons, I got three older sons and I had been very absent in their life from my uh foolishness of running out of jail and using drugs, it, it made me where I wasn't in their life as much as I should have been. So when it came to my daughter, I, with me being tired, with me always knowing that it was a whole lot better person inside of me than the person I was being, I think a, you put them two things together and I was tired. Man. You know, man, I was tired of going in and out of jail. I always knew I was somebody different than who I was being. And I did something different. But I never had gave myself a chance because usually when I would go to jail, I'd be like, just in jail. This time they was like, hey, um, you want this drug program or you want to go back to prison? Mm -hmm. And the program gave me the opportunity to deal with freedom and life. And then I could go back to the program. Freedom and life. So it kind of like allowed me to adjust and adjust back into society instead of getting dropped back. Yeah. Can you kind of understand what I'm saying? Yeah, cause, yeah, because you don't know how shit works. You have no guidance. You, oh, not even that. You, even if you do, so you get out of jail, you're a grown man, get you twenty dollars gay money or whatever money you had on your books, and you wake up tomorrow, and you like everybody saying, "Hey, you out of jail?" You mm. run back to the streets and try to get some money. Mm. You know I, mean? I ain't gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Um, I've been the bottom of the bottom of a drug user. I've been a drug user hustler. I've been like you feel me? Like I've always kind of someone been on my feet. You know what I'm saying? I used to be a taker, so I just drive niggas. I just take that shit. 
Mm. You feel me? Like everybody knew that. Like, man, I'm coming in. Aaron coming this nigga come to tell you. Watch out. You feel me? That's like a lot of people know me from a lot of different things, but um, but more so in the changing aspect of it, my car. Do you see do you see listening to this story, do you see how you are your father's son? Okay. You do you see how what we were talking about earlier when that you become your parents, right? You you say you have three sons that you were not involved in their life. You were in and out of jail. That's basically the same story that your dad was to you, right? Yeah. I um probably came to uh, uh first daddy was. Mm-hmm. You know, in a lot of a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you know it or not, you don't unless someone is showing you something different, you're gonna almost fall victim to of uh, the image that's in front of you. You understand what I'm saying? And, and it's that day that happened. Uh, at which we were around them. So, me just being able to change my life, me and being able to go and just start doing different things in my life, I had to change the environment. I had to change the things that I thought. I had, you know, you had to, like, I'm, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, I'm nowhere near perfect. You feel me? I still don't got this shit, what they call life, uh, mapped out. I still, I'm still struggling. I'm just blessed enough to have people around me that I've, that I've made myself important to. And from that, sometime when I want to go backwards for me, I'll be like, too many people depended on me. Mm. I got too many people looking, you know, looking up to me or looking at me or or relying on me for things that I've implemented, that I put myself in. Like, you know, if every day you got up and I was outside with a cup of coffee. Mm. Every day. And then tomorrow I wake up and I and you don't and you go down the steps with a cup of coffee. But I'm gonna be like, damn, I wonder how he is at work, because I know you need to talk, you know what I'm saying? Me? Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm present for the people that need more stuff. So. Like so, and sometimes that's good because sometimes some shit that you might not do for you, it's the strength from you of you not doing it for because of them might keep you afloat today. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's hard to kind of explain for me, but um, but I got a lot of people that that look at me as somebody who's changed their life around, and it's like an example of what your life can be if you do so. So for me to throw all that away because I got a pressure of life that I don't want to deal with, that I want to run from, because usually when you run back to something, it's because something what's in front of you is too much for you to handle right then. And so you run to something that you got the excuse for. So now I'm getting high. So now when people be like, man, what's up? I'm getting high, that's my excuse. Like, I don't want an excuse. I want to be able to deal with life. Mm. You know what I mean? How long have you been sober? I've been sober, uh, I don't should ask, are you sober, nigga? Most definitely. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. <clears throat> if you would know if I wasn't sober. <laughs> Your equipment Do you uh I mean sober from drugs, right? Yeah. But do you do you drink you, you drink don't do anything? Day. I drink champagne. Okay. And I might take a shot every now and then. Mm. But as far as I'm saying, like as far as like what we consider like drugs, like mm. something that's gonna make me throw my life away, I, I stay away from them things. Okay. Because um I know, I know, I can't win. Mm. I, I don't need to go say, it, "Do I got it?" Man, I ain't got high in twelve years. Let me see if I can just do high one time. Never relapsed or anything. Not in that time. Mm. You feel me? But I know if I go give it a shot, it's over. It's over. Like it ain't no. When you when did you did you go to did you go to uh, how did well how did you start your sober sober journey? You just said, "Oh, I'm I'm going to stop and just you stop," I or do you to jail and you went to jail. I got out and. The, I was out on bail and I was still f***ing up. Process to that judge was like, hey, either I can get you three years in prison or you can go this year do this year drug program. Mm. So the drug program worked. Yeah. I, you know what? Because most people, a lot of people say it does. You want me to tell you something funny about it, right? 
I don't want to say it didn't work because I really didn't work it. Mm. You feel me? Like, like to be honest, like, um, we was like supposed to go to outside meetings. I would never go. You know what I'm saying? I would just do the meetings inside that was mandatory because you got to sign. I would forge my papers for the ones on the street. Mm. I just felt like I didn't, you know, because I just don't believe everything that it had, that it says. You know, I don't believe once an addict, always an addict. I, you know what I'm saying? I believe that I have ability to be somebody different. And if I <clears throat> if I hold on to that belief, once an addict, always an addict, I'm always holding on to an excuse to go get high because it's a part of relapse, because they're going to teach you relapse, relapse is a part of recovery. Mm. No, nah, it's not to me. It's not, it doesn't have to be a part of my recovery. Yeah. So I, the program worked for how I worked it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And I think anything worked for you if you work it for you. You could put two people in the same situation and the outcome might be different because that person didn't find a way to make it work for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they were trying to work it the way I was working it. That might not work. For you. you might fall on your face. For you. you know what I'm saying? So I think a, a program is just how you going in, what you put into it. Yeah. The tools are there for you, you know what I'm saying, me from the people, the clinical people that tell you that study drug use and this and that. But as far as like not wanting to go use drugs, none of that shit gonna be with you when you go to you can you can go get high from somebody that don't know you. And you gotta make that decision at that moment to, you know what I'm saying, me, to you know, to make a decision to use or not use. You know what I mean? And but the program will give you self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, it help you build yourself up to be strong enough to say no when that time comes. I didn't I, I just didn't believe in all of it. And also I don't think uh, once a drug addict, always a drug addict. Because that's drug addict is just it's a behavior. And yeah, yeah. and a behavior can be is learned. learned. And it can so also can, be unlearned. Can, you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? So it yeah. was just like some things about the source of that program. You know what I'm mm. saying? And there, there is some things that they're like almost like Bible, like you know what I'm saying. It's like hope, like following for me, like you know, A means N A means you gotta go. If you stop going, you're gonna relapse. And all right, that's yeah. for people that that need that. Like everybody's different. Some people can stop and just don't go do nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You feel know I me? Mean? And then it's other people that need to go down that road because that road works. It keep it holds you accountable every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I got to the point. I don't need nobody to hold accountability for me, man. I know what I was doing wrong. Like I know, I know my mistakes. I know, I know my faults. I know my wrongs, and I know who I am. Mm. You know what I mean? And even in my worst of times, I always knew I was him. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I just need to get back to being that person that I knew I was. You know what I mean? So life just, you know, going down this road is just. But I'm more so um, just thankful to be able to be an example of what change look like. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, be able to influence or encourage others that maybe want to make some better decisions with their life. That's what life is about for me. It's not about fancy cars, jewelry, money. It's about being able to be a living example to the people who's who need something to look for or look toward to be like, hey, I can do this too. Mm. You know what I mean? And sometimes we need that. You know what I mean? And without that, you'd be like, man, I'm... Like a lot of my friends that they that might have stopped, you know, we all that might have stopped using. We can all go to each other now and be like, hey, hey, and have those discussions. You know what I'm saying about about what what role you play and 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 what you come from. As far as man, I don't turn my back on the people that I used to get high with because I understand that feeling. Mm. I might not associate myself with you. But I don't turn my back on you. I don't look down on you because I know all I got to do is make one bad decision and I'm going to be right back in that boat. It's yep. about it. One bad decision. So sometimes, you know, a lot of people there start doing good and start thinking they better than everybody else. I know mm-hmm. I'm in the same. <clears throat> I'm on the same level as y'all. I just ain't made that decision that y'all. That they fuck. I, I just made a different decision when I get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one uh, respectable thing that I uh, admire about you and uh, and Fab, because Fab is probably like one of the. I mean, when you say like probably like top five influential Bay Area people, 
probably Fab is on that list, I would say. Music and everything he does business wise. And the fact that he just walks around with no security or anything. He's he's like a man of the people. I mean, I I first met this nigga like playing basketball in 24 hour fitness. Right? Just and he was just in there with a bunch of random niggas just hooping. Because those are the people. So when you you know how you say like you go in your I've It's who we are that makes us work. You understand me? Because it's probably some uh, captain for that might be a little bit. But as far as this ground outside on this pavement, oh, for sure you would. Yeah. You understand me? Because we outside with the people. Mm-hmm. You can't influence somebody that you ain't around. Yeah. I can't influence you from the ground. Because all that can be fake. I need to make sure when I see you in real life, this shit you talking, this shit you doing, this shit you portraying is real. Mm. You feel me? So sometimes we get certain influencers a title when we ain't even never been there to see if they really living up to who they been. With us, you can see us outside. You can party with us. I'm there. I'm present. I'm outside. You're Uncle Bear. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, there's a difference between E-40 and Fab. E forty, you can say he's way more popular than Fab, and like his music is being played on East Coast nationwide. He he collabs with like all these popular artists, but you don't see E forty at twenty four hour fitness hooping. You don't see E forty, but that doesn't uh, make uh, at the club. You know what I'm saying? Where you are, you know what I'm saying? Mingling with uh regular niggas. You don't see E forty on broad on uh, just. At, at Whole Foods, just right, right. buying groceries. Right. Like it, his, so he just influenced. You see Fab doing that shit. He just influenced from two different levels. You know what I mean? Mm. We just outside with the people. Like, we. But one influence is, is more authentic than, than and other. more important than the than other. other. I, I feel. It, I feel that way too. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I'm not going to. I'm not going to use this as an opportunity to say that like, he's 40. Oh, yeah, of course he is. I'm, I'm not I'm saying, saying that either. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that the, our influence, our level of influence, is more so outside with the mm-hmm. people. You feel what I'm saying? I mean, other people might, and his influence is to give people that side the, the ability to dream that I can reach these goals myself. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So it's two it's two ways to influence. Oh, That's why I said some people influence from a distance, some people don't. They both is just as important. You know what I mean? There's a reason why your local news, when something is going on in Oakland, like these riots or whatever, there's a reason why they go to Fab and ask that nigga for an interview and his voice. There's a reason why when they have those fucking uh, those fucking events in downtown Oakland at the Ogawa Plaza, there's there's a reason why he's he's the one. He's one of the speakers. There's a reason why Fab uh, has a TED talk. You know what I'm saying? Right. But not E forty. Just saying. Love E forty, but I'm just saying. But uh And I respect your opinion. <laughs> I just ain't gonna get caught up in the politic part of it. Yeah, well. <laughs> I don't give a shit about but I'm not here. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I pay. Um, so we talked about the, the, the that side of your life. Let's mm-hmm. let's let's jump into like this this current side. How old are you? I'm 50. I'm about to be 53. When, years. when, so at 53 year old, right? Mm-hmm. You don't really see much 50 year, 50 year olds in general like this with uh, like social media. Or just, uh, or just outside. Yeah, or just outside and active with social media in general. Social media is a young man's game, right? Yeah. So when did, you, why do you feel or, when did you feel like social media is like something that is will benefit you in like life? How important do you think social media is? So I really used to just do uh, social media for like stuff we used to do in the community. Um, all this other shit, just like um, all this character, it's always been. So like when I first started getting, when I first started doing, like when I first started getting my life together, I wouldn't talk. Like you would always see me us together, but I I wouldn't really talk to people because I I was building the process of just trying to make sure I was getting me back together. Mm. 
You understand what I'm saying? And then, um, so if you would be around us at the store or this or that, you would know, like, oh, I'm going to be funny. You would know, right? But other people would, uh, so one day, um, me and Fab getting into it about something, and he recorded. Post. Come back the next day, like, look. Now, so then we just start, uh, every day, like, we're just, like, a lot of people think that most of it be skits. Most of that shit be real life shit going on. It's captured it with a quick poof. You know what I'm saying? And um, when I start realizing that um, that I can use social media as a way of edutainment, mm-hmm. as I can agitate you through entertainment, mm-hmm. then that's when I really start taking it serious. When I start taking, when I start seeing that, okay, I got you coming to my page for my funnies. But now I can throw my positive stuff in. And then you force it to. So and so that's when it really started. When I start 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 seeing the impact that social media was allowing me to have on my community, I started taking it more serious. Mm. You know what I'm saying, man? And um as far as I like to be known for the funny stuff. Mm. But I also but I more so want to be known for uh, my positive contributions to my community. You know, um, a person who's transparent enough to show his current fuck-ups and his past fuck-ups mm-hmm. and hope that we all can educate from it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always, if I do some dumb shit today, I'm going to go to Instagram and tell you about it tomorrow. <laughs> Seriously, like, it don't matter what it is. No matter how bad you're going to look at me, how silly it's going to be to you, how boosty it's going to be, how if I was stuck up, if I was this, I'm going to talk about it on Instagram because I hope somebody gets in my mind where they don't make that decision. Yeah, authentic. You feel me? I'm not hiding myself from the world. I'm sharing myself with it. Yeah. It's like an educating as an educational tool. Mm. This is who I am. This is what I've been through. These mistakes I make. And we're going to all make some fucked up decisions that don't mean that's who we are. That means that's what we was thinking at the time that we did it. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because a lot of the time we get judged for some shit that we done don't mean that's who we are. That's just decision we made at that moment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Man? And if I ain't in my current and I'm in my past, I'm going to do shit totally opposite than I'm going to do today. So I always got to be on top of myself because I know that person is still inside of me. I'll never be able to get rid of him. I just need to learn how to control him mm. to make him work for me and not against me. So with me being able to understand that, I try to always steer what I'm going through with the world because a lot of the time, Somebody else is going through the same shit. They just don't know how to share it. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So, and I understand that the shit that I hold on to is the shit that eat me up. And if I hold on to this shit too long, it might send me back in the direction I want to go. So I use Instagram as a shit out. Mm. Yeah, I get it out of me. I get it into the world. And I say, let's figure out some shit that world. What is it about you, do you think... Fab chose you to go on all these uh, business ventures with, because I'm pretty sure he has multiple people in his life, right? But what is it about you that he, do you think that... Uh, we we just family, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't... Me, that's that, like, that's like Fab holds, he, he's a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. He's a big part of me being on a path that I'm on. You know, he's just a big, big, strong presence in my life. You understand me? So I don't think that we really, the outside world might say, like, we choose each other. For this. But us, we, we just play two powerful roles in each other's lives. I, I play a powerful role in his life. He play a powerful role in my life. You understand me? And so that makes us always together and always involved and always a part of Mm. I didn't think somebody like the way I would look at it, the way you said it was like, hey man, Uncle, I think you could be a good fit for this. Come on, I just go do this. Like, nah, I'm always present. So whatever you doing, I'm doing. Mm. You ain't doing nothing without me. Cause we do this shit together. Mm. You feel me? So it ain't getting picked. It's like this what it is. Like, I don't you get what I'm saying, kinda? Yeah. Like it's not like I've been picked. Like I just think that life put us in each other's path because the the role we play for each other. You know what I'm saying? Me? It's, our, our our relationship is way much bigger than social media. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm. The things that we provide to each other, the comfort, the just shit that keep us together. You feel what I'm saying? I Me, mean, when we going through shit, who should I have somebody to talk to? Have somebody to, you know what I'm saying? All that shit is way more important than what somebody see on social media. That shit is more important than dope era. That shit, no dope era. Like, this shit, our relationship supports that shit being able to work the way it works. You feel me? Mm-hmm. If you don't have that relationship, but for who you doing business with, that shit gonna fall in. Mm-hmm. That shit don't mean nothing to me. Like, that shit don't, I, I'm, it's cool. That shit don't mean nothing to me. Like that, you can take all that shit away from me right now. I'm gonna still be the person I am. Yeah, I'm gonna still have a relationship where he have with him. I'm gonna still be me. You understand what I'm saying? Like those things are just accomplishment. The majority of them is his accomplishment. You feel me? I'm just dead a part of that shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? So it makes it, it's our accomplishment. But you know these things is much majority he is. You feel me? And I don't got a problem with that. That's the part. Like, I'm your uncle. Let me get these. Let me get this. Like, You're a, a street nigga, obviously, right? Um, and now you got a taste of this different life. I say the Hollywood life. And the Hollywood life is fake. The Hollywood life is like when niggas say, oh, yeah, I'll do this for you. But never having in, no, never have an intention of doing it. Um, uh like fake friends. Um, so as a street nigga where like word is your bond, uh, you're respected as a man as of, of the shit that you stand for, right? Do you feel like it's different jumping from that world, which I believe is the real shit, and then going into this Hollywood world where I believe is the fake shit? I I wouldn't say that I'm in that world. No? I just be around some people. That are in the world? That's in the world. Mm. And I be me, so it ain't no being able to be fake with me. Mm. You feel me? And if you fake, I ain't fucking with you. So the people that you see me deal with is people that I got relationships with. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I, I probably, like you can see media day, Warriors, we was there. I'm right there with Steph. You feel me? You'll be like, all right, nah, nah, I ain't a st- I, I'm a fan of Steph, but I'm a friend of Steph. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So we don't have to be on nothing fake with each other. Like, I build relationships with people. So you can be me. You can be you. I don't want you to be who you need to be for your status. I need. I, don't, I want to get to know who you is because none of that shit mean nothing. Yeah. You feel me? So when you put a person in a position to allow them or be Hollywood with you, then they can be that way. Mm-hmm. I'm coming with um, so it's like, and if it's something fake about you, I just won't deal with you. Like I don't, because really I don't do this for that. I'm not doing none of that. None of what I do is for nothing more, nothing Hollywoodish, nothing. Like I'm not chasing no status. I'm not trying to be uh, famous. I'm just being me, mm. and whatever that I produce by being me, whatever that come with, then that's what I deserve. So I'm not going to be nothing that I I shouldn't have to be. I'm not going to be nothing that I ain't. Or nothing that I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow you to have me be somebody I ain't to be able to get somewhere. I'm going to be me. If me ain't good enough for you, I ain't coming. Yeah. And that's in all circles that we walk in. I walk in. Huh, that's it. Nothing else. Nobody else. Nothing fake about that. Nothing phony about it. Nigga was happening. What's up with you? Like, mm-hmm. I'm being me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make you comfortable enough for being you. Like, I don't do that Hollywood ass shit. You feel me? Like, nigga, what's up, nigga? You feel me? So, <clears throat> but a lot of people will go to a person and they want to deal with them on that Hollywood status. So you build a Hollywood relationship with them. How you think that's going to be? It's going to be Hollywood. Mm. I don't give a fuck about that Hollywood shit. I don't <laughs> care. Like, none of that shit matters to me, bro. Yeah. I don't do this. I do this shit for fun and just being me, bro. Just lucky enough, me and me, who I am. And what I bring to the table and my personality character just get me in places that most people can't go. You feel me? These places that you speak of, were you ever in front of of someone? You don't have to say names because I know niggas don't like saying names. But if, were you ever in front of and met someone where you thought was a real nigga because they portray themselves as such and then you being around them and, and oh, this nigga's fake as I shit. I think you see that all the time. Mm. You feel me? Does it happen more than uh, usual? 
Are you asking me, do people live up to who? No, I'm just like the people that you've met in, that's what I'm in the, this the, in this people that Hollywood live up world. To that's being uh, viewed a certain way. Yeah, well, not viewed, but they put themselves portrayed, out there. Portrayed yeah, to be yeah. a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? I don't think I even. You would have to have been that done something to make me be like, oh, are you hella fake. Mm. You feel me? Because I don't really go into situations dealing with people for who they portray themselves to be. I go in there dealing with the person on based on the relationship I'm trying to build with. So I don't care. None of that who you is over here, this, this, and that. It's cool. That's that's it for the people that's paying attention to you. Now, if we in there, so but is it fake people out there? Yeah. Is it have I ran across phonies a lot? Mm. But I ain't going to judge you for your phony shit because who you are is who you are. You feel me? I don't got to deal with it. That's like me saying, oh, that nigga hella fake. But I don't got to never deal with him. So why I'm judging him? Like, it's not my role. It's, I'm My opinion ain't going to change if who the world think he is. So I'm going to deal with him based on how I deal with him. So if somebody, you know, somebody might come to you and say, man, dude, hella boosie. And then you'd be like, man, nigga hella cool to me. I don't. Yeah. Because our relationship is different. You deal with him on the shit that he got to be faking and phony ass. I ain't asking a nigga for nothing. So majority of the time when you say somebody is fake, phony, or this and that, it's because you didn't ask them to do something that they ain't done, they wanted to do for you. Mm. You feel me? Majority mm. of the time, that's what it be about. It be about us getting declined for something we want a motherfucker to do. I didn't get a boost in it. Our community, but I went over there. I get it too. I went over there asking niggas if they donate something to the football niggas and have it like Bro, we can't give money to everything. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I know how that all oh, this niggas out of Hollywood. Them niggas ain't really for the community. I asked them niggas to do something for my daughter's school. Come speak. They talking about, man, how much they got the budget <laughs> is. All right. Huh. So I just know how it is. So I just don't really try. I try my best not to judge a person or the per- perception that they paint to the world. I'm Who asking. is your closest industry Friend. Nephew. What well, besides him? Uh, well, hey, if, if a friend is, I mean, that might be stretching it. Well, who's, say, who, like, who's, 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 who can you call and be like, that's in the industry and just that you're really close to? If I really need it. You know what's funny? Most of my relationship, um, probably all of them. Like, I can call, like, if I, I, I might not have a number, but I can tell my nephew, call him right now. I need him to do something. He'll call him. Like, hey, mm-hmm. what's up? Ooh, I can call Tia, Tia, nephew, what's up? Like, I had these relationships with him where, I don't know, I just said my nephew had a relationship with him. I hit him through him. Mm-hmm. Like, our relationship be mainly not just through him, but I, they're dictated like through that. Like I let them control that shit. Like, cause I don't. Yeah. But any of them, I can call any of them. Bodie, anybody. Like, I if I need, I mean, call them right quick. I'm going. Oh, I can hit them in the DM. They gonna hit me back. Uncle, what's up? Do this. Right. There's a conspiracy theory about Snoop Dogg that uh, he has never smoked weed in his life. That that whole uh, stigma was fake. Huh? I, I just saw that's, this. On, I, I saw this on so, the news. So that's for somebody that's. Never really been around. Him. Yeah, nigga don't smoke. Weed so he all does day. smoke. Nigga smoke weed all day. Don't stop smoking. <laughs> don't stop smoking. Okay. Yeah, it was just uh, it was like some funny uh news story about this. Probably uh, someone saying that somebody's living up to an image that they want. Yeah. And they want the world to see, but they really don't ever smoke. Mm-hmm. And nigga, only yeah. nigga you probably know that ever smoked in the White House. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, I nigga. believe it. I believe it. So, um, are you and uh, do you guys do you still do that uh, Unc and Fab show? I, I you know, <clears throat> we're waiting for the right offers or the right things to have the right show of it. We had the one we put out already. It's really, um, it's really our everyday life. You feel me? Mm. So it's like, um, but you know, it's just something that we want to organically share with the world. So like a, a reality of, show, yeah. But mm-hmm. a lot of the, re, a lot of the, when you talk to a lot of people about it, they want to change, they want to make the adjustments to it. And I'm like, but mm-hmm. the adjustments, we ain't gonna be authentic. You, you, and if you I should, can't you, be me. You um, never hollered at Zeus Network. Uh, we could have been hollered at Zeus before they even <laughs> got popping. We could be our own Zeus. You can you can pay for your own subscriptions. Yeah, you can walk around and film your own self. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like that. I mean, you know, there's so many other. Ass. 
angles that we can go about it that we probably haven't explored at this time. But, um, man, you know, the Uncle and Fab show is anytime you see us together. Do you feel like you you guys are trying to do too much instead of focusing on one thing and get that shit popping and then move to the next? Because it, it seems like you guys, well, you guys have the clothing, you guys have the Uncle Fab show, you guys have the uh, uh, the the museum, and then you guys have the after hour parties, and there's a whole bunch of like shit that you guys are doing. Yeah. So uh, do, do you shit. think you're doing too much at one time? Uh, I, <laughs> you feel me? So I ain't really putting no. Are you asking me is we maybe not putting the right amount of focus somewhere? Yeah, it's probably possible when you're doing a lot when you're trying to um, juggle a whole lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. You might can't put that much time into this because mm-hmm. that's not all you're doing. So yeah. it may be a lot. Some of it may be that it's it get neglected by the work that we really got to do. That's hands on. Mm-hmm. Like the reality show is for the world to see us. That's why I keep trying to explain to you. That's that's something to. To so the film, so the world can see. It's an Uncle Fab show every day. Yeah, in my in my area, mm-hmm. you see it. Like you feel what I'm saying. So it's like it's not that important to me to where I, if it's gonna stop all this other shit that we got going on. Then I don't, none of this shit mean nothing to me, bro. Really, you feel me? Like yeah. I'm, I don't get too caught up in none of it. I just I just like the fact that I'm able to be who I am every day, all day, and I don't got to never fake or be fake. So what do you got? Uh, what do you have work? What it? What are you working on? What do you got coming out so, uh, right now? <clears throat> so um, lately, I'm I've been getting back to my grassroots of what I started off doing once I got clean, and that's like being extremely involved and active with the kids in our community. Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> you know, for one, we you know we do thug so, therapy. Them, them niggas need it. Yeah, yeah. Thug therapy is one thing that we're very active in, but. I'm um I'm getting back to doing like a lot of the kid talent shows I used to do. I'm getting back to do the the teen all girl and all boy youth empowerments where I have people that come out that been through all walks of life, share their story, they show like man, just because you down, you can still get back up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and just all the other stuff that we got going on, just to continue to stay involved and active in that, but really getting more um. I'm putting more, a lot, a lot more uh, attention and time into our kids. You know what I'm saying? Because I just think that's, our youth is like me. You feel me? Like, yeah. I'm 53. I'm about to be 53, but I'm really like a nigga that's 30 years old. Mm. You feel oh, me? Yeah, we see that, yeah. Like, my mind say <laughs> how I am. Everything about me, I'm probably like somewhere that's 30. I'm able to admit that because I know by me throwing so many years of my life away, it, it prevented me from growing and maturing right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, my life lessons going to always be there as far as, yeah, I got the life lessons of someone my age, but my mentality, my character, my personality, you would be like, man, you know, you would have people always say, man, nigga, hello, why you act like that? Because that's where I'm at mentally. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So I just know how important it is for our kids to have, you know, the proper leadership, the proper tools, the proper love and the proper um, education as far as to be successful in life. I know what I didn't get when I was a kid and I know where that road that took me down. So if I can prevent another kid from going down the road, I went down just to find out later that I ain't, that was the wrong road. I'd rather just let you know now, hey, this ain't what it is. Is Thug Therapy catered more to teenagers or is it just for everybody? I think, I think right now Thug Therapy is more so catered to adults. Okay. To grown men that's dealing with a lot, you know what I mean, mm. and and talk about that, like how did, like what is it exactly? How, how did you guys come up with? It? So it was just we, well, we really came up, probably pretty much came out through it. It was like we was going through some shit our own personal selves, but we just now start having these meetings, start pulling everybody together. We going through some shit. I know everybody going through some shit. So let's just have a man's meeting, bro. We just go in there and just put our shit on the table. Mm-hmm. You feel me? We had the first one that kind of blew up. The second one got bigger. And this third one was even bigger. You know what I'm saying? But um, but now it's just getting more so more people are coming. So more resources are being available. You know what I mean? So it, it's like it's turning into like a, a rally. Like, to a, like, to like a movement. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, um, but I don't want me. My lane is I like the kids. I like to take kids on field trips. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, this summer, I took 75. You know, I took 50 kids. Water park. Um, on the 29th of this month, we taking 25 kids to Fright Fest. Like, that's the stuff I like to do. You feel yeah. me? I feel like that's better that, that you should focus on teenagers and kids better because when you, when you let's say you have thug therapy, right? And you have 50 adults in there, right? right. It'd be them same niggas that, it, that are in there like, oh, let's all lift each other up, being positive. And then once they leave, them niggas is, you, you walk past them, they're mean mugging you. Be them same niggas would be like, uh, uh, that are ready to fight because you bump them in the club. So what, but, what but, was the point of this therapy? Now, but, teenagers... Because, because, well, because, because it is, right? That therapy might not work the first meet. That therapy night might not work the second one. It might not work the third one. But if you keep somebody coming back and coming back and coming back, and you give them different reasons why they should try to be a different person, eventually that same person that you bumped into, you might bump into him after the next thug therapy and be like, my bad, my brother, my bad, my bad. But if we if we keep that mind state is that <clears throat> you got to, to help the kids, you got to help the adults. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To empower the adults is to send them back out there to be able to help the kids. Mm. So it's like, a lot of the time we, we had that mind, that mentality like, like you say, like, man, nigga ain't going to change while you going. But, you know, it takes time. It takes time. It takes yeah. time. It take, it take time. And if you look at it in a negative way, then you're going to deal with it in a negative yeah. way. So I always just have a problem. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's true. You feel what I'm saying? That's true as well. Yeah. But I believe children are more important. Are more important now, because... Now, 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 that I agree. When you think of the crimes, nigga, it's teenagers out there doing all that crazy shit right now. Ain't no adults. It's these crazy-ass teenagers out there. So. If, Fix their mind, and then everything will change. Because when I was a kid, my dad didn't instill values in me. Uh, my society instilled values in me. Everything that was around me. I'm the man that I am because of what I learned on the streets and everything around me. Not my father, because I didn't like the nigga. Right, I, right, right. I was trying to be the opposite of him. Right. So... Yeah, yeah, kids are. I, it's just, and it's just where I like to be at. It's like, it's just like a thing of mine. You know, sometimes some people don't got patience for kids. Yeah, exactly. You feel what I'm saying? Some yeah. people don't got patience for kids. Bro. Yeah. So tell the people where they can find you if you have if any you, you social media you want to. You can find me at the Hunkster One. Um, if you want to see me, I'm always on Broadway. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. That is true. The nigga is... Well, tell them what the store is, man. 19th of Broadway, 1764 Broadway. You can catch me in front of that store almost any day, every day. And that's a uh, Dope Era dope store. Era. Yeah. Man, me there. Dope Era or at whatever club that's going to be. Yeah, where the, where, the, uh, where the strip club uh, spots at? <laughs> where that should be at? <laughs> we ain't got that. We got after. No? We're the after hours. Don't you guys got an after hour uh, club now? Well, we ain't. I, we, they you can't promote that? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's hush, hush. If you know, you know. You know, you know. But there'll be bitches in there. Okay. Popping that ass. You've been there. I've been there. Yep. Uh, yeah, I threw a couple dollars that I didn't want to throw, but yeah. when, in, when in Rome. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, uh, Unc, I want to uh, appreciate you coming on. Thank you for giving me uh, some of your time and wow. like telling your life story. Everybody follow and support what him and Fab got going on. Go to Dope Era, buy some product. You know, yeah. more so, man. Do you know this? Everybody, man, just continue to try to keep going, keep being better, and keep striving to be the best version of you. I'm gonna tell you, man. When um, when I realized that I was enough. I stopped trying to be everything that I seen in everybody else that I thought would be cool on me. And I just think a lot of the time we get caught up and 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 not believing in, in what's inside of me is enough for me to be just as important, just as amazing, and just as gifted as anyone else. And when you get to the point in life where you realize who I am is enough, life every day becomes so much easier because you be like, hey, Whatever it is, whatever whatever I face, I'm enough to. It's enough in me to deal with it. Whatever I'm going through, I'm I'm enough. You know what I'm saying? What um, you know, you'll go in some room sometime, and I go in there and I'd be like, 
I ain't got none of the sex any of these people got. But when I go in there, I still know that I'm enough. You know what I'm saying? Me? So now that's what, because if I go in there with not being confident in who I am, it's going to show to the people. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So a lot of the times, man, you just got to be who you are, love who you are, continue to try to be great and build yourself up, man, and just love love other way you want to love yourself. Yeah, and all you niggas with some screws loose, go to Thug Therapy. We got you. You know what I'm saying? They got you. This is Everyday Celebrity Podcast, and we are out. You. 